This video is for those of you who want to learn or review the basics of trigonometry. Now it's not as complicated as it may seem. First, I'm going to go over a few pointers. Now, trigonometry can only be applied if the triangle you're using is a right triangle. One of the angles must be equal to 90 degrees. Trigonometry is used to find any side length or angle measure in a triangle, not including 90 degrees. You need to know one angle measure of the other two angles and at least one side length of the three sides in a triangle. And lastly, you should always have a calculator handy. Dividing numbers is annoying and trigonometry has huge decimal numbers, so save yourself the brain work and use your fingers. So first, we need to understand the terms used in trigonometry. There are three types of sides in relation to the angle you are using. They are called the hypotenuse, the opposite side, and the adjacent side. The hypotenuse is always the side opposite of the right angle. It is also the longest side of a triangle. So if you are solving a problem using trigonometry and the measure of the hypotenuse turns out to be smaller than any other side of the triangle, then you know that there's a problem and that you either miscalculated or you misunderstood what the definition of a hypotenuse is. The opposite side is well opposite of the angle you are using. In this case, we are using angle B. The opposite side would be line AC. Neither endpoint of the opposite side is ever allowed to touch the angle you are using. As you can see, the endpoints of AC are on angle A and angle C. The adjacent side is the side next to the angle you are using and connects it to the right angle. So the adjacent side would be line CB. The endpoints of line CB are on angle C and angle B therefore connecting the angle you are using with the right angle. So, to sum it up, line AB would be the hypotenuse because it is the side opposite of the right angle. Line AC would be the opposite side because it is the side opposite of the angle you are using and both endpoints don't touch the angle you are using. And line CB is the adjacent side because it connects the angle you are using with the right angle. Now, there are three mathematical terms that are related to these three sides. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Confused? I'll explain in the next part. In a triangle, if you know two angle measures, one of which must be 90 degrees, then the third is fixed because all angle measures in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. If you know one side length, then the others can be determined by using the following ratios. The sine function is defined by the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. The cosine function is defined by the ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. The tangent function is defined by the ratio between the opposite side and the adjacent side. This means if you know the measure of one side, you can use these ratios to find the length of any other side in the triangle. For example, if you know the measure of the hypotenuse, you can find out the measure of the opposite side using this function or the measure of the adjacent side using this function. Or, if you know the measure of the opposite side, you can find out the measure of the hypotenuse using this function or the measure of the adjacent side using this function. And, as you may have guessed, if you know the length of the adjacent side, you can find out the length of the opposite side using this function or the length of the hypotenuse using this function. Now let's try some examples. As you can see, Angle B is 37 degrees and the opposite side is 10 inches long. In this equation we're trying to solve for the hypotenuse. So for this equation we know the opposite side length is 10 inches and the angle we are using is 37 degrees. When using both the hypotenuse and the opposite side in one equation you must use the sine function.
So, let's fill in what we already know. We know the angle measure is 37 degrees. And we know the opposite side is 10 inches long. We don't know the hypotenuse. What's next is simple algebra. We're trying to isolate the only variable we don't know, which is the hypotenuse. So, once you multiply each side by the hypotenuse, then divide each side by sine 37, what you get in the end is hypotenuse is equal to 10 inches over sine 37. The rest is even more simple. Simply take your calculator and enter 10 divided by sine 37. The answer is 16.6. By now, you should have understood how these equations and functions work. But I'll just give you one last example using the tangent function this time. We'll be using the tangent function like this. We know that angle B is 45 degrees, and we know that the opposite side is 30 millimeters. What we're trying to find is the adjacent side. So, we'll fill in theta for 45 degrees. And the opposite for 30. Once we've isolated the only variable that we don't know, it becomes adjacent side is equal to 30 millimeters over tangent 45 degrees. Once again, we bring our calculator and we type in 30 divided by tangent 45. Enter. We have an even 30 millimeters. Now, you may be wondering, how in the world am I going to remember which function goes with which side types and what are their orders in the equations? Well, there's a simple way to remember this. It's called SOKATOA. That's an easy way to remember the terms. SOKATOA means sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite adjacent. that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Also, if you noticed, in each of these equations, the opposite side is always on the top, and the hypotenuse is always on the bottom. Those are two ways you can remember these equations, and that's trigonometry. If you've understood everything that I've covered in this video, great for you. And if you're still confused, well, all you need is a bit of practice, and then you'll get it. Talking about practice, here are some practice problems. I'm going to give three practice problems, and when you see the word pause on the screen, you can pause the video and try to solve the equations. You'll need a scientific calculator, and if you're too lazy to get one, you can visit this website. Once you've solved your problem, unpause the video, and I will write the answer.
hope this tutorial helped you in understanding the basics of trigonometry. Use this video as a review if you ever need to, and please inform me immediately if I made any mistakes in this tutorial. So thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, please vote for it in the contest.